peace and innumerable blessings. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Spirituality and Motherhood Podcast, where we reside in a sacred space where spirituality meets motherhood. In this space, we explore everything from how ancestral and earth-based spiritual paths and practices shape motherhood, to how having spiritual gifts impacts your experience as a mother. I am Jeanette Jackson, your hostess. I'm the mother of two boys, a hoodoo, a psychic, and a tree talk to lay herbalist. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Let's get started. All right. All right. All right. This episode and most likely the next episode is just going to be us chickens. Just you and me getting to know each other, sharing and caring. So I don't know. I think I'm shifting and my energy is kind of weird. So I'm going to roll with it. And I hope you are blessed with me rolling with it and you don't mind rolling with me too. For this episode, I'm going to discuss attachments, spiritual attachments. I'm going to share my own experience with having attachments. And if you want to hear me talk about attachments in children, which feels like it's in the ether, get at me. I'm also going to discuss how, you know, whether energy is attached to your child or whether they're picking up stuff that isn't yours. Because I talked a lot about the eldest and the spirit got in my ear. I was like, yo, you need to talk about the youngest because his energetic system is different. But quick reminder, if you have any questions for me, my spirits, or guests, because they are coming, <laughs> you're having a spiritual topic you'd like me to tackle, head on over to spiritualityandmotherhoodpodcast.com and let me know. Alternatively, you can get at me at on Twitter at jlancien77, L-A-N-C-I-E-N 77 on Twitter, or spirituality underscore motherhood underscore pod over on Instagram. Get at me. I want to be of service to you. Please, please, please support this podcast. Support it. Support it by subscribing, if it's possible, and wherever you're listening. Leave a good review. Share with your friends. Or, you know, you can also just slip some change in my purse by heading over to PayPal me backslash ritual mama. And putting some coins in the plate. All right, y'all. Let's 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 get this conversation started about attachment. <laughs> so, background, right? Because <laughs> I've had a few attachments in my days <laughs> on this earth. I first learned about spirits attaching to humans when I decided it was you know I didn't decide it was time to be pregnant the eldest was like look it's time he was he would pop up and I was like oh no I need to clear up all the crap I have with my mother and purify my body as a vessel so let me go see a shaman (laughs) so I was important at the time and I would go see this shaman and the first reading we had she was like you you got some spirits on you and the first spirit was kind of chill. She was chill. She was like, I'm here to help Jeanette be safe. I'm here to help her intuitive functioning. And that was a very chill spirit. And the spirit, even as it was detached from me, was like, I want to be helpful. I want to be of service. And the shaman was like, she needs to heal. <laughs> Let her heal. And if you want to have an agreement later, go, go do it. So that was a really awesome, gentle experience. Yeah. The the, the second spirit was not gentle. <laughs> I think that spirit, that spirit was not playing. I happened to be in France at the time, but I still had a telephone um, session with the shaman. And she was like, yeah, you might want to have some friends come and support you, you know, in your wholeness. So <laughs> I had two friends. And they were on the other end with their their animal familiars and some candles lit on the other end of the phone <laughs> with the shaman. And the phone kept cutting because this spirit did not want to come off. The phone kept cutting. People's lights were flickering. Their animal spirits were like hissing and growling at the phone. <laughs> it was not a good scene. And after that situation, I never saw the shaman again. I never talked to her again. She would not, we did not schedule session. <laughs> I don't know whether it was the spirit or my ancestors or just her. 
because that spirit was that that spirit was ready to fight. But it, you know, it came off. It came off. It came off, and everything was cool. So I say that to say that spirits attach for various reasons, and various spirits are attached to you. Sometimes they're helpful, and sometimes they're not. And although you may go to a shaman or a reader or a root worker or whoever to support you in getting these spirits off of you, if you feel like you have one, make sure that you're always functioning in your own personal integrity and and rooted with your intuition and connected to your benevolent spirits, your honorable ancestors, whoever it is, or even just pray because it's not. Spiritual workers always do their best, but the thing about being human is we all have stuff we're growing through. We all have stuff we're going through, and sometimes that comes out in the work. So it's important to make sure that you are going to, A, a worker who can actually be of service to you and works well with your spirits and works well with your helpful spirits and your helpful ancestors, and that you will be supported in this work. Because the second time, the second person I went to to get a spirit removed, Actually, I came to her not necessarily because I knew a spirit was on me, but because something else was going on. And through her, I realized there was an obsessive ancestor. I thought there was something else going on, but no, it was an obsessive ancestor. Like, things at the grocery store were flying at my head. I was having, like, near accidents. It was crazy. And the woman, she committed to help me, but, you know, in the end, she didn't help me. And it was an interesting lesson because um, that, the way that unfurled or unrolled is I I developed a much deeper, stronger bond with my honorable ancestors because my honorable ancestors showed up. They're like, this is what you're going to do on your end and this is what we're going to do on our end. On our end, we're going to start sending more spirits to protect you. And this is how you take care of the spirits who are going to protect you. This is how you feed them. This is when you feed them. And this is what you do. (laughs) And there were all these spirits around me to protect me. And I was in more deeply engaged in ritual. And I loved it. I, it was so much fun. And then they were like, well, this is what you're going to do. You're going to make some soap. Because soap was supposed to be made. No soap was made. But my ancestors walked me through making soap, which is something I never thought I could do. But now I'm able to make soap. And I do make soap as part of our own sort of ritual and support in keeping ourselves spiritually clean and protected. So I say that to say, um, make sure that you are connected to your intuition (laughs) and your highest self and all, all that, you know, guides you, protects you and blesses you when you're working with spiritual practitioners, because at the end of the day, they are human too. We're all human. We're all doing our best, which kind of flows into the most recent attachment I, I was blessed with. Again, I knew it was attachment because things around my head were not right. Things were not flying at my head this time, thankfully. But things around my head just weren't right. Like um, the shower curtain would bunch. The shower curtain, it bunches. It does what it do. But it was bunching in this way that was really agitating me. And like, I wasn't hitting the head with anything. But like, it was just things around my crown chakra were not how they usually are. And I was like, Lord Jesus, what is this? So I come to my ancestor altar and I have, I keep divination coins there when I have questions that are simple, salt, yes and no. And I, I divined and they were like, yeah, mm-hmm, there's an attachment. I'm like, Lord Jesus. So when everybody was at the house, I set up some incense. I made sure there's something juicy on the ancestor altar because I needed help. I sit out the elements Um, Because I needed my helpful earth spirits with me, (laughs) my nature spirits. I was like, hey, help. And I was walked through having this entity detached from me by my honorable ancestors who were ancient. It was a very interesting experience because it's, it's one thing when like my grandparents and even their parents come through versus like what comes through is like we are primordial. (laughs) <laughs> the earth like it's it, it's different set came through i love it when they come through because their energy is different anyway so they came through and uh they facilitated me in hearing the spirit 
hearing what the spirit had to say and why it was attached. It was attached due to guilt. It wanted me to know how I heard it in a previous lifetime. And I needed to hear its story. I needed to feel the pain that I caused it. And I needed to understand. And when I heard, when I heard what I had done, what I felt what I had done, the spirit left. And it was a very interesting experience because my spirits were helping me process what I had done and, and, and also understanding that in our many, many times on earth, we cause each other harm. We hurt each other so deeply, but in many ways, life is messy and causing harm is sometimes how we learn and that it's important to grant ourselves and each other compassion and mercy, understanding that life is just sometimes this way. And it helped me see myself and life differently. It doesn't mean that I still don't feel guilty when I hurt others, but it helped me understand that sometimes it's a part of life and that the best that I can do is to constantly seek evolution, to constantly seek growth. And when I've hurt other people, do what I can to address it. It, it was really painful to see what I did to this spirit. And it also kind of made me see myself differently. Because mm. the trauma I've been through has caused me to see myself as like, oh, I'm so joyful. I'm so love. I'm so light. I don't harm bees. But in this, this life, woo. <laughs> I was a, I, you know what? I was a terror. I was horrible. I was evil. And the interesting thing is seeing the lifetime and knowing the whole I was raised to be this way and it was culturally and socially acceptable and even praised that I was that way. But that doesn't mean it was right. And I caused a great deal of pain to people around me. So seeing myself in that lifetime and seeing that spirit was very helpful. It helped me cultivate a deeper sense of humility and, and understand that in some ways, when we are, I guess, quote unquote, punished by spirit for the things that we do, punished by ourselves, punished by life, we suffer. You know, that's sometimes a good way to cultivate humility for things that we've done this lifetime, knowing where we've hurt other people, knowing or unknowing, and in previous lifetimes, because ain't nobody, ain't nobody been good on this earth all the time. <laughs> ain't nobody always been like loving life. And granted, there is some sort of like, you know, I'm returning your crap back to, to you. Let's not act like some of us didn't get our jabs in just to get our jabs in. Because again, in this life, it's messy and we don't always return. We don't always put stuff where it belongs because we don't always know where it belongs. Let's not even get to the, the fact that so many of us are out of the integrity of our being and that causes some sort of pain that we don't always know what to do with. So it turns to anger that we throw at each other. We throw at each other. We throw at our children because our children are like, hey, we're all out of integrity. This all sucks. So we all, we all, we all messing up. So it's important to have some compassion for ourselves and each other as we figure things out. I'm also coming to better understand that uh, it's important to set kids up in their own divine integrity, in their own divine alignment, so they don't even err. Because I don't want foolishness. I don't want, I don't want the children to be <laughs> have things flying to them, being like, "Oh, that's a spirit. That's an attachment. I wonder what I did." Mm -mm. I can't affect their their past lifetimes, but this time I can do all I can to set them up to live in divine alignment. So certain things don't occur for them. They don't make certain choices. Because I made the choices I made in that lifetime because I was, I made them as an adult, but as a child, it was encouraged, which was kind of sad to see too as a parent. I was like, oh, okay. All right. Mm. And I'm also saying this, you know, as I sit here with my, 
my uh, my psalm book looking at me. I've been beginning to play with sin as an idea of something that takes you away from God's purpose. Not God's purpose is like, you know, I'm beginning to look at God differently too. God is this sort of creative force that runs through us all and everything. Not like a dude in the sky, but a creative force. So sin is something that takes you away from how the creative force best operates through and around you rather than I ate shellfish and I ejaculated. No, <laughs> it, you know, it's your seed. Do what you want with it now. <laughs> and eat shellfish if it makes you happy. If your body likes it, you know, I love it for you. There's a creative force running through you and it operates harmoniously in you and in society in certain ways. And are you operating within the, that way? Because my, my honorable ancestors got me all, ugh, all up in this Bible, working through things. And also understanding sin is something that's not so horrible because sometimes we got to do wrong before we understand that we're doing wrong. We got to do a little wrong before we, we do a little right. It's like baking a cake. You know, sometimes you're going to experiment with almond extract versus vanilla extract until you get whatever, you know, that cake tastes most delicious as. Life is the same way. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So yeah, the attachment is gone. The primordial ancestors still smile at me and chuckle at my shenanigans and say, hey, <laughs> everything does not need to happen this lifetime. Take a deep breath. If you need to, you come back. <laughs> and then they laugh at me. Because I'm like, I don't want to come back. I don't know if I want to come I don't know. Let me not do that. Because I'm thankful for this life um, and what it is now. I'm thankful to be with these kids. And I'm thankful these kids showed up for me. So with that being said, let's go on to this next um, segment where I'm going to talk about discerning when your children pick up energy that isn't theirs, I'm going to talk about number two, because I talked a lot about number one. So let's get into it. Okay, so number two. <laughs> so it feels important to talk about number two because he's such a different kid. He is such a different kid. He's, he's an old man in a little body. So when energy is on top of him or he's absorbed stuff that isn't his, um, he fights. I think it's real crotchety. He does because he's very loving. And that's how I know he's feeling safe and in himself and grounded and very warm and very kind and very creative <laughs> and joyful. But when he's, when too much stuff has been sent to him and he's taken it on, he, he gets mad and he fights it. He fights for his right to exist as himself and stand in his own authority and personhood. So that's how I know stuff is on him that doesn't belong to him. If he's fighting simple things, if he's fighting things like eating breakfast, if he's fighting things that he normally enjoys, if he's going to fight, something's not right. And generally, if kids are fighting, something ain't right. You know? Something's up. <laughs> but this is the way he displays, I have energy on me and it's pressing on my org field and it's, you know, disrupting my flow and I'm angry. <laughs> so that's how I know it's him. And, and rather than sending stuff back, I create space for him to express his will. Because expressing his will, expressing his personal power, having his say, doing what he wants, and having safe space to do what he wants and be who he is and do those things, um, help him return to himself. Help him return to whatever it is. And the energy just naturally goes back. Because that child and his loving integrity and his loving authority, you could try to disrupt it and he's going to get angry and reestablish himself. There, there ain't no stopping this child. There's no impressing. Which is interesting to, to say and note because um, 
he's more subject to more subtle forms of that. It, he's, his energy is very masculine. So like, uh, he's more subject to being, uh, I don't know how to say it because it sounds bad to say about a child. He's more, he's more subject to like feminine manipulation and the soft touch. But even that, um, if I create space where his personal integrity is affirmed, his personal authority is affirmed, his innate self is affirmed, even that pops out. It, it pops out because he knows who he is. And, he's, and at the core of his being, he's not willing to sacrifice his authority over himself and his life and his integrity and his word for anything or anyone. And it's beautiful to see that. And it's interesting to see that because he's able to do that and be so strong, yet still find space and ways to love others. So yeah, for child number two, it's more about creating space to come back to his personal authority and his integrity. And that's kind of challenging. It's challenging because I struggle sometimes to find time and space to do it because between going here and back to school, between all like, you know, what usually happens is I let him have his way. I let him have his way on things, on, on, on whatever I can give him. I make sure he has it. And I do my best to make no bones about it because if he's fighting hard, if he's struggling, if he's like just windmilling at me, I know something has attacked his personal integrity. I know somebody's energy's on him. And sometimes it's not even, it's societal energy. It's the societal energy of school. Like if it's a day where I can tell he'd been told what to do one time too many and he didn't see the wisdom or the necessity of the stuff he was told to do. <laughs> he needs space. He needs space to just just to do and be him, even if, you know, it isn't what an adult wants. So now, nah, like, I'm not going, I'm not going to get on you about cleaning up on a day like that. Now nah, I'm just going to, I'm going to clean up after you go to sleep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not make your brother clean up. I'm going to say, hey, just, you know, number one, just clean this up and <laughs> I'll take care of it. Or I'll on the slide clean up and then I'll lighten the load because he has, he has the right to express. Yeah, and he has the right to find his way back. So that's how the second one works around having energy put on him. He responds to belly checks, but he responds to belly checks and checking in with his body and, 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 and noticing that as a way of mimicking his brother. He doesn't necessarily feel deep into it. He feels like, okay, my brother's doing this. I'm going to do this too, which is really freaking cute. But the life of a little brother. So that feels like all that needs to be said about number two. I'm going to close this episode. It's, it's short, but it's all right. It's all right. What need to be said was said. More interviews are coming, but my energy's odd at the moment. We'll see what happens. Things need to settle down before I, before I actually am able to hold a harmonious space for a conversation. Don't forget, if you have questions about spirituality and motherhood you'd like to answer, you just want to say, hey, catch me over on Instagram at spirituality underscore motherhood underscore pod. Head over to my website, spiritualitymotherhoodpodcast.com. Say, hey, catch me on Twitter. J Lancien, L A N C I E N 77 at Twitter. And just let me know your questions. Just let me know. Or just say hey. Also, if you want to support me, you know, be sure to subscribe, leave a good review, share with your friends, or even share your, your financial con contribution at PayPal me backslash ritual mama. That's paypal.me backslash ritual mama. All right. Thank you so much for being here. I'm truly grateful for you being here. And I look forward to sharing again soon. Take care.